This is Twit. Hi, this is Brian Chi, Chibert. And we are talking with Tim Titus, the CTO of Path Solutions. This is all about Twit after school specials because we want to learn more about voice over IP and give us some tools to troubleshoot and do our job better. Tim, this is the last of our segments, our last of our after school specials. On this time, we're talking about garbled voice. Uh, obviously, this is pretty obvious. If I can't understand the word you're saying, it's probably garbled. But let's go talk about what causes it, what's actually happening. You know, obviously, in the old plain old telephone days, POTS communications, garbled could mean anything from water dripping over the contacts to maybe cockroaches or mice chewing at the wires. <laughs> but in a digital age, not so much. What are the causes in a digital age? Well, I, I, I want to step back and just do a little bit of history there because you mentioned the rats, you mentioned the water, and I'm thinking about that and laughing because some of the problems that are completely gone is something that, that we don't think about is you just don't have crosstalk anymore. I remember being on an old POTS line and I'd be talking to somebody and I'd occasionally hear somebody else's conversation. And it'd be a lower volume. It'd be kind of off to the side. And I'd sit there and say, wait a minute, I'm hearing somebody else order a pizza. And I'm thinking, what are they doing on my phone line? And it's the fact that with old POTS lines, you had enough electromagnetic interference where you'd end up having one call be able to jump over and have a subcarrier on the other call. You'd actually be able to hear a bit of those, those phone calls. Uh, the FBI loved it because they could just sit there and listen into any phone call they wanted, whereas modern day, you need a sniffer to actually be able to copy the packets to, to listen into a phone call. But you just don't have crosstalk like you used to. You don't have static like you used to. And static was created by uh, a, a, a lot of water penetration into a lot of old uh, phone boxes. Uh, so a lot of problems just are, are becoming history that we can say, gee, I remember kind of like those modem screeches that nobody hears anymore. Uh, those problems are just disappearing from the landscape. This is one of those problems that will eventually disappear. I think that some of us will have heard garble. If you haven't heard garble, you may not ever hear it again. But effectively, what garble sounds like is you're on a phone call, and then somewhere in the middle of the phone call, all of a sudden you hear some very rapid, <laughs> and then it continues on, and you're wondering, what the heck was that? And the garble might only lasted for a second or two seconds or three seconds, but you're wondering, where is this coming from? Well, what causes garble is analog to digital conversion. And so if you had a, let's say you have a really nice uh, polycom speaker phone in a conference room, and it's one of these really nice thousand dollar jobs, and it's still analog. You don't want to have to replace it because it's expensive to replace with a, a digital phone. So you put a little ATA box under the desk, which is an analog uh, uh, transceiver that will convert the analog on one side of the phone to digital on the other side. And now it's on your phone system. So it's doing analog to digital conversion. And on that speaker phone, you dial nine, you get an outside line. Maybe it's taking a local phone line. And if you don't have a local trunk, it's going out a POTS line on your phone system. So it's now being converted back from digital back to analog to go back on the, the POTS phone line. You're now going across country to another phone system at another company. Let's say they end up having a POTS line that it's connecting through. It's then going from their POTS line back to a digital connection. Then let's say it goes to another ATA box under somebody's desk that connects to an old style Mickey Mouse phone that the person insists upon having on their desk because they love the look of the phone. That's a lot of A to D and D to A conversions. You're converting analog to digital and then digital to analog and then uh, analog back to digital and then digital back to analog. With all of those conversions going along, they all end up affecting each other. What, what that means is one of them gets slightly missynchronized doing the conversion. It throws the other one into missynchronization, throws the other one into missynchronization. They all get out of synchronization and they all end up resetting and then saying, okay, we're going to fix this problem. They reset, they 
get back to converting the analog to digital and digital to analog, and it recovers. So the good news is they all recover really well. The bad news is, is that this problem happens because one of them gets out of, uh, out of step and it causes everybody to trip. So it's a sort of problem that's disappearing because there aren't as many analog phones. There's not as many ATA boxes in an environment anymore. So, do we just wait and hope that everybody changes to digital phones? Or is there well, something that we can do to help this along? Well, you help it along by getting rid of those analog devices in your environment. If you have, let's say your boss comes up to you and said, hey, they just had a very important conference call in the, in the conference room, and they said it was really bad. We had a whole lot of garble going on. Uh, and you say, okay, boss. Sign the check here. We're going to convert that to a digital phone. And they're like, what? How is this going to solve the problem? If you get rid of the ATA boxes in your environment, you're going to reduce the likelihood of this happening. If you get rid of your POTS line and say, we're going to all digital, we have SIP trunks going outbound on our connection, that everything stays digital all the way through from endpoint to endpoint, you dramatically reduce the chance of this occurring and so in many organizations, I'd say, just get rid of all of the analog devices. And as you get rid of them, this problem will just disappear because you're getting rid of them. The remote company, you know, your boss is going to say, gee, everything's fine, but we only hear the garble when we call that remote company. Well, it's a problem with their phone system. It's not, not something you can fix in your environment because you've already gotten rid of all the analog stuff in your environment. Wow. Okay. Well, it sounds like it's the death knell for analog lines if Tim Titus is to have his way. Well, actually, I would too. <laughs> Though I got to yeah. admit, I still use POTS um, in certain places just because I want to have, you know, wireless head, wireless phones. And, you know, my IT group doesn't let me have digital wireless phones yet. Well, yeah, you need change. to admit, you've got a Mickey Mouse phone on your desk. You just want to drive that Mickey Mouse phone. No, it's not a Mickey Mouse phone. It's Garfield. There you go. <laughs> well, you know, Tim, this has been a really enlightening set of talks. And I'm hoping our viewers got some value out of this. And I'm hoping they head to your website, which is www.pathsolutions.com, and go and check out your blog because it's got an amazing amount of really, really good information there. And... You know, having the tools, knowing your network makes a huge, huge difference. So, Tim, is there any place else that our viewers can go to to get a better view into what Tim Titus is doing, helping to solve the world's networking problems? Well, it's primarily I just I just write the blogs and hope somebody reads them. Uh, actually, no, we, we have a, a good uh, a good readership amongst the blogs, uh, but that's really my focus of, of trying to get the world to be able to help solve these problems. Uh, uh, being a, a good steward of, of engineers, I figure helping them solve the problems, whether we sell products or not, is, is really kind of my game. So uh, if it's not there, you can reach out to us via the website. We'll see what we can do to, do to help you out regardless, because uh, uh, you know our purpose as engineers is to make other engineers' lives better. Well, thank you very much for a truly enlightened attitude. And, you know, I'd like you folks to tell me what you thought. This was our first try at a Twilight After School special. And we wanted to dig into voice over IP as our first topic and go in and go at it as problems, how to solve them, how to identify them, um, and things like that, so, and especially concentrate on best practices. Did you like it? I'm Chebert at Twilight wit.tv or I'm also on Twitter at ADV NETLAB Advanced Net Lab. Love to hear from you. This set of after school specials was driven by you, the viewer, and I'd like to hear more from you. What kinds of topics do you want us to do deep dives on? Topics that won't normally fit into the regular Twilight episodes. We need more time, we need more space. And we need generous people like Tim Titus of Pass Solutions that are willing to help us expose some of the best practices of voice over IP troubleshooting. 
This has been Chibert. And thank you for listening.